Let's now turn our attention to the eighth week and understand its significance. Noah was symbolic of Jesus Christ in that the ark represents salvation through Jesus Christ. All those who believe in him are saved from the wrath to come. Noah was called the eighth person, 2 Peter 2.5. There were eight souls saved in the ark, 1 Peter 3.20. Noah being the second week signifies the eighth week being divided into two. Noah provided a further type and shadow of Jesus Christ and that he was carried through the flood. This represents the work of Christ being carried on into the second eighth week after the sixth week, the darkness of the church. As Noah, the second week, was carried away in the ark, being saved from the first consummation, or the flood, so also the church in the second eighth week will be carried away in the rapture before the second consummation, which is the tribulation. Of the nearly seven billion people on the earth today, only a few million will be saved, which is a very small remnant. Only a remnant will be saved, as the Bible states in Romans 9.27. You want to be counted in that number. You don't want to be one of those knocking on the door when the Lord has shut it. Now let's talk about why the eighth week is divided. The eighth week being split into two represents divine healing through Jesus Christ. He came to save his people from their sins. Eight divided by two equals four. And the number four is a spiritual number that represents healing. We see this in the construction of the tabernacle. Let's read now from Exodus chapter 27, verses 16. And for the gate of the court shall be an hanging of twenty cubits of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen wrought with needlework, and their pillars shall be four and their sockets four. You know, numbers are not magical, but God does use them to call something to our attention. The dividing of the eighth week further signifies that the power of the gospel that was present in the first eighth week will be duplicated in the second eighth week. As Jesus said himself in John 14, 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes on me, the works that I do, meaning the works that Jesus did in the first eighth week, shall he do also, and here we see Pentecost in the early church, and greater works than these shall he do. And now Jesus is speaking of the second eighth week, because I go unto my Father. The second eighth week is a time of healing for the church, a time of restoration to her former glory. The second eighth week is the crown of his work for the church. The second week of Noah further gives us a typology of Jesus Christ in that in the days of Noah fallen angels ruled the earth. Now that is clearly read in the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 through 13. God assigned Noah to preach to that generation, warning them of God's coming judgment upon the earth on account of their sin. And this is why Apostle Peter called Noah a preacher of righteousness. Let's read that now in 2 Peter 2 verses 4 and 5. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Noah preached that God would bring a flood to bring an end to the activity of fallen angels and man's sin by them, and that God would then renew the earth after the flood. Jesus also came at a time of darkness, 
and preached the dissolution of the traditions of man that had taken hold of faith and ruled the hearts of men. He preached the dissolution of Moses and a new law of grace in himself. He preached a renewal in himself. He overturned the tables of the money changers, Matthew 21, 13. He preached against the hypocrisy of the scribes and Pharisees, Luke 11:44. He preached a transition from Moses to himself, John 6, 32 through 47. We are now in the second eighth week. God has assigned the second eighth week as an extension of Jesus' ministry in this time to preach to this generation the dissolution of the tradition of man that held the church captive during the sixth week. The second eighth week is also a time of preaching the restitution of all things. Jesus is bringing renewal. The preaching of the second eighth week was prophesied by Enoch, as we read earlier. Then after that there shall occur the second eighth week, the week of righteousness. A sword shall be given to it, in order that judgment shall be executed in righteousness on the oppressor, and sinners shall be delivered into the hands of the righteous. Now let's talk about why the eighth week follows the fifth week. The eighth week is seen to follow the fifth week because King David also symbolizes Jesus Christ. As David was a king and shepherd, so Jesus is the king of kings and the shepherd of his sheep. Revelation 19.16 And he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And also, John 10.11 Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. The eighth week follows the fifth week because Jesus has the key of David. What is the key of David? Well, let's read from Revelation 3.7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that opens and no man shuts and shuts and no man opens. Jesus has the key of David. So what is the key of David? David was used of God to transition the tabernacle from skins to stone. And Jesus transitioned the tabernacle from stones to skin, meaning himself. Let's read now from 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verses 11 and 12. Then David gave to Solomon his son, the pattern of the porch, and of the houses thereof, and of the place of the mercy seat, and the pattern of all that he had by the Spirit of the courts of the house of the Lord, and all the chambers round about, of the treasuries of the house of God, and of the treasuries of the dedicated things. We see that God initiated a change from the tabernacle of skins through Moses to the tabernacle of stones through David. Then, in 1 Corinthians 3.16, we read that God initiated another change. Know you not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Your body is now the temple of the Holy Ghost. God has taken faith from the table of the altar to the table of the soul. God set a new pattern for faith in Jesus Christ. As we can see, the steward is the key to the new week. So why is this important for us to know? Well, God brings to our attention that he always selects a steward to take his people from dissolution to renewal. In each week of God's plan, he selected an individual and raised him up to fulfill his word. God always sends somebody. When it was time for the flood, who did God send to preserve life? He sent Noah. When it was time to fetch his people out of Egypt, 
who did God send to bring his people through the transition? It was Moses. When it was time to choose a people to himself, who did God communicate with? It was Abraham. The key is the steward. The key is in God's hand to turn the lock to open the door for you. Now who is the steward and key of the second eighth week whom God has appointed to take the church from dissolution to renewal? And now let's turn our attention to the sixth week. As we see in this illustration, the sixth week divides the first eighth week from the second eighth week. The first eighth week was the time of Jesus' ministry and that of the apostles. The church grew in grace and in knowledge, being in one accord, one faith, believing in one Lord. The sixth week is the period of darkness which soon followed. As Apostle Paul wrote, After my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Acts 20:29. 20, How many times have you heard people say, What's wrong with the church? And how many times have you asked that question yourself? The church has nearly 2,000 years of the tradition of man to overcome. During the sixth week, true apostolic governance disappeared. Error prevailed. The apostasy of faith was evident. There was no growth, no true faith in open stewardship ruled. What we are seeing now through the second eighth week is a re-emergence of true apostolic governance. Truth is restored to the church. God has assigned a new steward and key for this week who is giving new knowledge and a new priesthood.